Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are going to discuss William Collins and his famous poem O to Evening in this lecture. William Collins was born in 1721 and he died in 1759 and he had a brief life as you can see. We will look into the historical and literary context briefly then examine his life again briefly then read the poem O to Evening paying attention to the structure and then we will give a very interesting reading from Terry Eagleton. William Collins lived in the period where we have kings like King George II from 1727 to 1760 that actually covers the period of William Collins. During this period we have the conflict between Hanoverians supporting King George and his family and the other one supporting Jacobites from the earlier period rest restoration period James II and his dynasty. We also have a famous poem in from this period the seasons by James Thompson and the rise of the graveyard school of poets. The most popular poem of this period is of course Gray's elegy. This graveyard school of poetry gave inspiration for a new kind of poetry much like what we have in 20th century the dead poets society yeah, film which is uh, interesting to watch. Now let us pay attention to William Collins. He is often considered a transitional or post Augustan or pre romantic poet depending on the persuasion that one has. He is formally a neoclassical poet, but thematically a romantic poet. He describes individual emotional experiences in his poems. He started writing poems at the age of 11 and published three volumes in his brief lifetime. He fortunately had the opportunity of mingling with well known poets of the times like James Thompson, Thomas Gray and the great literary figure Dr. Johnson for some strange reason he turned melancholic and died early. He is known for poems like Ode to Fear, Ode to Mercy, Ode to Liberty and of course Ode to Evening which we are going to discuss now. What is an ode? It is a song. So, we have some brief ideas about ode here. Ode is a lyric poem in the form of an address to somebody or something. It is a long lyrical poem of Greek and Latin origins. We have two kinds of words, one is called Pindaric words, other is called Horatian words. The first one actually uh, was used to praise people and also used in certain occasions, but the second one was more calm and meditative that is personal. Ben Johnson introduced the Pindaric word into English, Abraham Cowley introduced the irregular word into English. As you know, Wordsworth's famous word on immortality is an irregular word. In our case Collins poem is a Pindaric word to the evening time. Now let us get into this word to evening published in 1748. It is an unusually unrhymed word with great musical qualities. It was influenced by Milton's translation of a Horatian word through the Wharton brothers. There is a critical study by Havens how Collins was able to get this idea of writing this poem through uh, the Wharton brothers. This poem influenced the romantic poets like Wordsworth, Coleridge and Keats and many others of course. This is considered to be a most enduring poem of the 18th century. It was first published in odes on several descriptive and allegoric subjects. It was revised for publication in Robert Dodley's collection of poems by several hands in 1748. It is considered to be a favorite piece of poets and novelists too. 
this poem has a specific structure like this. There are of course, 52 unrhymed unequal lines that is irregular lines. We have 13 stanzas, each stanza has 4 lines. Each stanza also has 2 long lines and 2 short lines that is where this irregularity comes in. One critic called H. W. Garrard identified 3 divisions in the poem. Though everyone may not agree with it, it is useful for us to read the poem and understand it. First 20 lines are considered invocation to evening, lines from 1 to 20 they all belong to one sentence. And similarly, the second one 21 to 40 it talks about nature in general and the last lines 41 to 52 are considered to be total abstraction. Some may not agree with it, but this is what Garrett has to say about William Collins poem O to Evening. Let us read the poem now. There are some archaic words they are not difficult to understand once we know that they are words which we have to pay some more attention. If aught of what and stop or pastoral song may hope chaste eve to soothe thy modest ear like thy own solemn springs, thy springs and dying gales. O nymph reserved while now the bright haired sun sits in yon western tent whose cloudy skirts with bread ethereal love overhang his wavy bed. Now, air is harsh to say where the weak eyed bat with short shrill shriek flits by own leathern wing or where the beetle winds his small but sullen horn. As off he rises midst the twilight path against the pilgrim born in heedless hum. Now, teach me made composed to breathe some softened strain whose number stealing through the darkening veil may not unseemly with its stillness suit as musing slow I will hail thy genial loud return. For when thy folding star arising shows his palely circlet at his warning lamp the fragrant hours and yells who slept in flowers the day and many a nymph who wreathes her brows with the sedge and sheds a freshening dew and lovelier still the pensive pleasure sweet prepare thy shadowy car then lead calm waters where some sheety lake cheers a lone heath or some time hallowed pile or upland fallows gray reflect its last cool gleam. But when chill blustering winds or driving rain forbid my willing feet be mine thy heart that from the mountain side views wilds and swelling floods and hamlets brown and dim discovered spies and hears their simple bell and marks over all the dewy fingers draw the gradual dusky veil while spring shall pour his showers as off he won't and bathe thy breathing tresses meekest eve while summer loves to sport beneath thy lingering light while sallow autumn fills thy lap with leaves or winter yelling through the troublous air afraid thy shrinking train and rudely rains thy robes. So long sure found beneath the sylvan shed shall fancy friendship signs rose lipped held the gentlest influence worn and him thy favorite name. It is a hymn to evening, it is an ode, it is an ode in praise of the evening time, the twilight time. The poet describes whole evening in his own words using certain poetic devices and rhythmic structure. When we pay attention to the thematic contrast, we can understand how the poem begins and progresses and ends. Of course, it is a poem to the evening, but it contrasts it with morning. It talks about spring and also about autumn. It refers to western and also eastern sides. Similarly, we have a pilgrim with a focus, with a purpose, but at the background we can also think about the traveler who may not have any purpose. There is an element of concord harmony in the evening, at the same time some amount of discord is also indicated. It deals with the end of the day, beginning of the night, so the, we have this contrast between day and night. The poem contrasts between pleasures sweet and chill blustering winds. 
nothing is purely day purely night purely evening there is some mixture of everything the poet describes all together this is a poem addressed to evening so we have this apostrophe the evening is not described just as a natural event it is personified as a woman a chaste woman a chaste woman a beautiful woman a desirable woman and also there is an allegory of this passing of time from day to evening from one day to next day one season to another season that is from spring to autumn or from autumn to winter we have the personification of all seasons spring summer autumn and winter moving from one season to another we have some metaphor here and there and we have one example this metaphor refers to cloudy skirts also we have this metonymy the whole evening just one uh, part of a day is representing the whole nature when this is a the case then one part one one small element of this evening twilight represents whole of nature that is uh, metonymically it happens we have a very interesting case of polysyndeton here and hamlets brown and dim discord spires and hears their simple bell and makes over all so whatever is happening around this village in or in the uh, rural area in this natural environment we have all of them coming together and 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 they all come together so quickly they create some harmony we said this poem has lots of musical qualities and the musical qualities can be found here through the analysis of sounds with reference to some examples some softened strain this is a poem oton song that is a musical instrument used to sing to play the music some softened strain poem or song strain song line poetry rudely rends thy robes alliteration we have in these two examples we have assonance in the first line very first line if ought of ought and stop or pastoral song ought oten we have also have stop song the vowels are repeated adding to the musical quality we have beautiful anamatopia in line number 9 to 10 now here is hushed say where the weak eyed bat with short still streak flits by on leathern wing short still streak flits it's a case of alliteration and also it attempts to imitate the bat movement we have anaphora in three lines beginning with while if you go back to the slide you can see in line number 41 43 and 45 we also have syncope dropping of that is omitting of certain syllables certain letters pastoral darkening that's of course done for the sake of maintaining the metrical pattern that is foot we also have more details about this rhyme rhythm and meter the whole poem is unrhymed but it is not blank verse blank verse means iambic pentameter must be there this poem doesn't have that so we have lots of variation number of lines number of feet varies from line to line we have internal rhyme also in this that's where the musical qualities are much more breathing traces meekest eve evening that is meek that is breathing musically the evening time and also it uh, some critics have noted that this eve could be the eve of book of genesis we also have this enjambment that is run on lines and uh, cesura as off he rises meets the twi twilight path against the pilgrim born in heedless hum now teach me there we have this sister now teach me made composed again we have this pause but th this comes at the end of the line so what comes in the middle of the line we call it sister now teach me made composed to breathe some softened strain we have this uh, two meters actually one is pentameter another is trimeter penta 5 feet and tri 3 feet the major metrical pattern rhythmic pattern in this poem is iambic of course 
on the whole we can say that this is a poem this is an ode to evening it is a personal descriptive and meditative poem on the evening of a day the poem universalizes that is allegorizes a specific evening to the evening of everyday life we have the major theme of beauty being evanescent or life being short lived the poet or the speaker one who we see in the poem is the pilgrim the poet or the pilgrim observes the vagaries of time with a detached outlook though attracted to the beauties and dangers of life in fact many critics have found that the poet is willing to get into the natural scenario but then he detaches himself he goes away from the scene of action as long as we live let's sing the beauty of evening and the biblical eve too it appears that the poet is saying uh, this kind of idea in this poem terry eagleton has a very interesting reading of this poem he says collins uses an elaborately formal diction and solemnly elevated tone the language is elevated of course and one of the features of this poem is it uses archaic words he was enamored of ornate poetic figures so terry eagleton observes that the hut is there is one hut to which he goes the eagleton says the hut is humble but the poetic language is noble elevated grand the poet differentiates himself from the landscape he describes using elaborate conventional terms like bright haired wavy bed sylvan bed the critic deduces that the poem is not about the human subject nor even about the natural object but about the medium of language that's where we can say that this is a kind of deconstructive reading a eagleton it is self referential it is a text about the process of writing a poem especially the invocation to the muse for the poet to write his poem about the evening about the twilight about the twilight of our life probably collins was too much aware of his own twilight to summarize we have looked into the historical and literary context of william collins which enabled collins to write a poem like this ode to evening this is a poem considered to be a pre romantic poem an inspiration for poets like wordsworth coleridge keats but it took inspiration from milton that's where we can see the poetic tradition from charles s spencer milton two words were through collins eagleton's deconstructive reading of the poem indicates that this is a poem about poetry writing using language so he gives a reading in which he says this is not about the poet this is not about the evening but about language itself we have many references you can read whatever you are able to get hold of but one thing you can understand is when you collect a list of references like this you will find some critics are more interested in certain poets than certain others like for example this young you can see even in 21st century people are interested in collins as long as people live as long as people are interested in their life as long as we think about life language death loss i think we will continue to read poetry thank you